Hello, uh, my name is Chris Betts and uh, this is my colleague uh, Dr. Kate Burnett. I would like to thank the BJU International for selecting our paper on urethral sphincter EMG in normal women as an article of the week. I would like to acknowledge the work undertaken by my co-investigators, especially uh, Dr. Cecile Tawadros, who is now a urologist in Lausanne, Switzerland. I thank the R&D department at Salford Royal and the Manchester Ethics Committee for supporting this work, and also thanks to the audiovisual department at Salford Royal. Thirty years ago, Professor Claire Fowler, working at the National Hospital in London, published an extremely important study on urethral sphincter EMG in normal women with urinary re retention. Professor Fowler reported an association between myotonia-like EMG activity in the external sphincter and urinary retention in premenopausal women. This work has been very important in our understanding of the neurophysiology of the external urethral sphincter and also in providing a possible explanation for urinary retention in young women. The myotonia-like EMG abnormality described in Fowler syndrome consists of two components, complex repetitive discharges without deceleration, known as CRDs, and complex repetitive discharges with deceleration, known as decelerating bursts, or DBs. CRDs and DBs have very characteristic sounds on the EMG machine, and we'll demonstrate this later. CRDs and DBs are thought to result from direct muscle fibre to muscle fibre impulse transmission, known as efaptic transmission. Fowler and colleagues proposed that this abnormal activity in the urethral sphincter may result in an inability of the urethral sphincter to relax and hence urinary retention. Efaptic transmission is thought possibly to result from a channelopathy causing high excitability of the muscle fibre membrane. Thirty years ago, because of the apparent uh, association between urinary retention and polycystic ovaries, it was suggested that there may be a hormonal basis to Fowler's syndrome. In 2001, we presented at the Baus Annual Meeting a study of sphincter EMG in 20 asymptomatic premenopausal women. To our surprise, we found that a third of the women had CRD activity in their external sphincters, and we noted that CRDs tended to be found in the women who were in the luteal phase of the menstrual cycle at the time of the test. Our present study was undertaken to investigate <coughs> further the presence of CRDs and DBs in asymptomatic women and to determine if there was any association with a menstrual cycle. We recruited healthy premenopausal women who had no urinary symptoms and no evidence of incomplete bladder emptying and were not on any hormonal medication. The volunteers completed a menstrual chart and each had a sphincter EMG test in the early follicular and the mid-luteal phase of the cycle. BMI, urofluorometry and symptom questionnaires were performed prior to each EMG study. Pregnancy tests, serum estradiol and progesterones were measured at the time of each EMG test. The EMG tests were undertaken according to our standard practice using a concentric needle electrode. The EMG equipment used was our Dantac Keypoint portable machine. CRDs and DBs can only be reliably recorded using a concentric needle electrode. Surface electrodes are not adequate. CRDs and DBs cannot be voluntary in induced. Needle mu movement can induce short bursts of CRDs in the sphincter and it's important to recognise this artefact. We discounted any abnormal activity related to needle movement. 
This is a brief recording from a volunteer who had a normal EMG in both phases of the menstrual cycle. Unlike most striated muscles, there is a constant level of activity in the urethral sphincter. The muscle only becomes quiet during voiding. This is another recording from another asymptomatic woman in the early follicular and then in the middle luteal phase of the menstrual cycle. Often, as in the last recording, one can hear abnormal activity in the distance from the needle. In this case, without any needle movement, the activity spreads close to the needle and here are examples of the CRDs. This is a recording from another asymptomatic woman who had abnormal EMG activity in both phases of the menstrual cycle. First in the early follicular phase and then in the mid luteal phase. The full results are detailed in our published paper. To summarise, 30 EMG tests were performed in 15 asymptomatic women. Sphincter EMGs were positive for CRDs in 8 of the 15 female volunteers. In 3, the abnormal activity was found both in the early follicular and mid luteal phases of the menstrual cycle. In a further 5 of our subjects, CRDs were only present in the mid luteal phase. No women had abnormal activity in the early follicular phase and normal activity in the mid luteal phase. No clear correlation was found between the female hormone levels and the presence or absence of abnormal EMG activity. This study has confirmed our earlier work. About one third of young women with no urinary symptoms have CRD and DB activity in their external urethral sphincters. This abnormal activity is found more frequently in women during the luteal phase of the menstrual cycle. For the first time we have found that in some women there is normal activity in the early follicular phase and abnormal activity in the luteal phase of the cycle. The female hormones may alter striated urethral sphincter muscle fiber excitability possibly by action on the chloride channel. The importance of CRDs and DBs in causing urinary retention in young women remains uncertain. It may be that the distribution of this abnormal activity or the amount of this abnormal activity in the sphincter is important in causing urinary retention. It is now clear that the finding of CRDs in a young woman with urinary retention does not automatically establish a diagnosis of Fowler's syndrome. Young women with urinary retention should not automatically be labelled as having Fowler's syndrome. Opiate use and psychological stress do need to be considered in young women with urinary retention. A diagnosis of Fowler's syndrome may only apply to a very small proportion of the young women with urinary retention.